today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. I can't believe Megan Thee Stallion on her own documentary has come out and admitted to lying on Tory Lanez. Breaking news, it is official. Young Thug is free, he is coming home today. November the 4th is Diddy's final bail hearing. He could still get out on bail. And this new video could be the reason why he gets let out. This is the stupidest thing that she could have ever have done, period. What up? It's Chen Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Friday morning. Y'all already know how I get down. My favorite day of the week is finally here. Um, but before I let you guys go to celebrate your weekend or kick off your weekend, I got a good show set up for you guys today, all right? Um, I got four lead stories. We're going to talk about somebody coming to Diddy's defense, and I think he might actually get bail because of this. We also have a shocking revelation from Megan Thee Stallion. She has admitted to lying on Tory Lanez. Then we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk about Kim Kardashian, Kamala Harris, maybe having a sex tape, Donald Trump, Jennifer Aniston, Taylor Swift, and your boy, Drizzy Drake. Of course, we're going to close out the show as we always do with question of the day and a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. All right, we didn't have this in our original lineup, but this is breaking news. It is official. Young Thug is free. He is coming home today. Right now, Young Thug is out of jail. Shout out to um, Megan, our correspondent, my friend, my homie. Sends me all the information on with Diddy, Tory Lanez, and um, Young Thug. Uh, she just said this. Young Thug is coming home. The judge's sentence is 40 years to serve five years, but commuted to time served, and he will get 15 years probation. Then um, uh, something about a backloaded 20 years will be um, served in the custody if he doesn't complete Sorry, we'll be served in custody if he doesn't complete probation. All right. So that's in straight from Megan. This is super official. Thanks a lot, Megan. Um, what I just want to, I'll probably on Monday, I'll break everything down for you guys because everything is just fresh. It's coming in, but just in layman terms to just break everything down. Yes, Thug is free. Okay. Um, his fans could rejoice over that. However, he is tied up. Like one of his biggest conditions is that he's not to be in the Atlanta metro area. Like he cannot be around Atlanta city, basically. Um, you know, he cannot drink. He cannot do any drugs. He cannot, um, there's a lot of restrictions. A lot of his homies, a lot of people, they did say that he can, um, hang out with Gunna though, because they have songs together. So talking about Gunna, all of you guys that was like, yo, Gunna is snitching, whatever, blah, blah, because he took a deal. Thug end up just taking the same deal and copying. By the way, sorry, I forgot to say this. He pled guilty. So it's not like he won the trial. He pled um, guilty to charges. There was, I think, two charges where he didn't plead guilty to. And I think he said, like, no contest. But most, I think most of the charges he um, um, he pled guilty to. Okay, so this is a win in the sense that he's out and he's coming home. But it's not like the state lost. It's not like Fannie Willis lost. This is what prosecutions and the states do. They want you to admit to guilt. You have a record. You have a criminal record for life. And he has 15 years probation. He has to check in. He can't do anything without them seeing. He cannot have any weapons around him, etc. Like there's, Like I said, I'll break it all down on Monday. If you ask me, this is a win on both sides. It's more really embarrassing for the state side because it's a two and a half year trial, the longest trial in Georgia history, which is crazy. One of the long longest in the United States period. Um, and for everything and everybody who they arrested and all of this stuff, I'm sure they were hoping to put Thug away for a much longer time. But from what I know about the court system, it's not necessarily really only about jail. It's really more about the charges that you could admit guilt to. So the prosecution's idea is let's drag this out as long as we can, see whatever we can get from it, have them plead guilty, and then 
more importantly, how we could use them after. And the judge said this. Um, he, she said, sir, you are world famous rapper. You know, for those of you who don't know who Young Thug is, I'm going to meet some older people or parents watching this or listening to this on CFQR. Young Thug is huge, all right? Uh, you know, for the younger generation, he's not in the 90s or 2000, but um, for the younger generation, he is the Tupac, Biggie level. Like, he is their 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 goat, all right? Um, maybe not Tupac and Biggie, but anyways, on that level. Anyways, so the judge was like, look, you have a huge voice, and I'm going to make you use that voice. Four times a year, you're going to do, um, you know, anti-gang um, talks at schools. You're going to do benefit concerts. The state is going to use Young Thug as the poster child of why you should stay away from the streets, why you shouldn't do illegal activity, why you should stay away from um, arms, why you should do all of these things, why you shouldn't do all of these things that he says in his music. So the feds are going to watch him. He will not be able to make the music he used to make, make the videos he used to make. But after sitting down in jail for two and a half years, trust me, you'll agree to anything along those lines to get yourself out of jail and especially he was facing you know 30 40 years right almost like the rest of his life in jail so like i said of course everybody in the hip-hop industry music industry is happy thug is home because this trial was just ridiculous to begin with but don't think that the state lost they are going to use him as the poster child in hip-hop music to stay on the right path and do the right thing for the younger generation who follows him and and comes up now how much those kids are going to listen to those talks that he's going to give? Who knows? But I still think it is um, it is a better um, alternative than to have him sitting down in jail for 20 or 30 years. Some might disagree. Some are would be like, yo, if you keep him in jail for 20 or 30 years, now the kids are really going to be afraid to not do these things because they're going to serve 20 or 30 years. You shouldn't let them out. I'll let you guys discuss that in the comment section below or send me emails. But like I said, we might talk about this a little bit more on um, Monday because a lot more details are going to come out. But I just wanted to throw this in here. Young Thug is coming home. He's free. Kaylana Harper of Diddy's Dirty Money claims that Cassie was a drug addict who gave everyone lap dances. All right, that headline is horrible because in this article and the video I'm about to play for you, Miss Harper, Kalana Harper, says something way more important that a lot of people are missing. She says the one of the reasons why Diddy is not getting bail is because he allegedly called her 56 times and she's saying that she will get on the stand and says and say, and say that yeah, he called me 56 times but that's cuz that's my homeboy. He wasn't calling to threaten me. He was calling to reach out to me and I will get on the stand and say that he didn't threaten me at, at all. Let, I know I'm jumping, but let me get to it. But this is a huge, huge breaking story. You're going to see over the next couple of days, more and more people are going to be talking about this. And what a lot of people are forgetting is that Diddy can still get bail. Yes, he was denied twice, but he still has a third opportunity, November the 4th, in front of three judges, a three circuit court judge, and the person who is going to be defending him at this uh, bail hearing is the best defense the best bail attorney in the entire country okay so anyways sit back i'll explain everything to you all right um so kalena harper from diddy's dirty money from diddy's dirty money is still standing by her former boss's side while taking shots at cassie the singer recently sat down for an interview with breakbeat media where she claims that she wanted to be like diddy when it came to his former girlfriend who accused him of abuse cassie um, Harper says she loved her, but has accused her of being an addict. She said, I loved her to death, but she was naive. Like she liked to get high. She liked to party. I saw Cassie growing up from a little girl. She was always willing to like give every mf -er in the place a lap dance basically and get drunk and be everyone's good time. Okay. After she went on and continued to talk about Cassie, she then now started talking about Don Richard. Don Richard is one of like the lead singers from Dirty Money, and she's saying that basically she's not really believing what Don Richard is saying. And for those of you who don't know, Don Richard is one of the people who are suing uh, Diddy 
civilly, okay? Uh, so she said, one of the most surprising accusers has been my longtime friend and collaborator, Don Richard, also of Dirty Money. However, Harper is not sold on Don's story. She says, I don't F with Don like that. And I'm going to stand on business. I didn't see that. I didn't see what she is accusing him of. What I saw was everybody going around having fun. And now all of a sudden she's acting all weird. You're being a weird B word. Okay. So this is an interview that was, I think, it's, I don't know, 40, 50 minutes long. I watched the whole thing. Just to give you guys a little bit, con a little bit of context. Sorry that I may be jumping around here, but I'm just excited about this stuff. Um, so Don Richards and Miss Harper, Kalea, Kalina Harper of, um, Dirty Money. The reason why, uh, Kalea, I'm going to call her Miss Harper. Okay. I have a hard time pronouncing her first name. So Harper. Okay. The reason why Harper is doing this interview is that Don Richards in her case named Harper a bunch of times. And Harper is like, yo, why are you naming me? If you want to talk about Diddy and you want to have a suit, why are you throwing my name in here? And that's the reason why Diddy was calling Harper so much, allegedly 56 times or 57 times. So why this is important is that when Diddy, like I told you earlier, Diddy was denied bail two times. In both times, they cited that Diddy was a threat to society. He was a threat to his community. Not that he doesn't have money because he put up almost a record-breaking amount, $50 million, um, giving up his passport, doing all of this, etc. They actually even said, we don't feel like you're that much of a flight risk because you're famous. Where are you going to go and hide? You're Diddy, right? What One of the main things is they said, you're a threat to society. And the reason why we say that is because you we're calling one of the co-conspirators in the Don Richards case. And you called her 56 times badgering her. The fact that now Harper is coming out and I'm going to play the video for you guys in one second. Now the fact that Harper is coming out and saying, yo, he called me down, but he was calling me like out of a brother sisterly love as if like, you know, I'm getting in trouble and I'm calling my sister or something happens or somebody has a court case and they put my sister's name. I'm going to call my sister 56 times. If she doesn't answer, I'm going to keep calling her. That's what she is saying. All right. So if she now is goes to court November the 4th with this, the best bail uh, uh, lawyer in the country. And she's like, hey, if one of the reasons why you're keeping him is because he's badgering me. Yo, that's my brother. That's my homie. He didn't do anything wrong. I think that could maybe be the reason why he gets bail. I'm not saying he will get bail. I'm just saying this really increases his chances. Anyways, I've talked enough. Let me play the video and then I'll tell you a little bit more on the other side. Take a listen to um, Harper. So they basically don't deny post bail because he called me 56 times. So I feel really bad. I will get in court and stand up for my if I need to because it would be no different if it was you and me. So like I said, it's a whole 40 minute interview. I can't play the whole thing for copyright reasons, but she, 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 like I said, she said, yo, that's my bro. And then you hear at the end where she's like, it would be no different. If it was you and me. Right. And she said, the key thing is I will go to court. So <laughs> crazy. Now here's the flip side. As you guys know, I always like to, to say both sides and then you guys be the judge. What some people are saying is that this may not help him because how do you prove that those 56 calls was not him badgering her. And now he maybe was calling her to badger her, got to her, maybe paid her off and was like, look, don't say anything. Maybe threatened her with some stuff or maybe offered her money. And now she's going to turn around and lie and be like, actually, those 56 times he called me was for because we're homies and he wasn't badgering me. So how does if the if the defense brings her on and says, look, he called her because they're bros and sister, brothers and sisters relationship, kind of, then the prosecution's gonna be like, yo, we don't believe that. We believe he was badgering. Show us. So maybe there'll have to be some text messages and we'll have to go further. He, she can't just go to court and say that because we won't know if she's saying that under duress or she's maybe doing this interview under duress. We don't know, right? You don't know what is going on. Remains to be seen. Leave it up to you guys to discuss about this in the comment section or send me emails, whatever you guys want to do. What do you think about this? Do you think she's telling the truth? Do you think maybe Diddy actually got to her and he was calling her 56 times? Like some people have been saying, 56 times is a lot to call somebody. It does seem like it's badgering, but 
who knows, man? Did he get to her or is it a bro and sister relationship? And he was just trying to reach out, asking for help. Who knows? Comment below, send me DMs um, and I'll, I'll fill you guys in November the 4th. We'll see that he has one more time, one more chance um, to get let out on bail. I'll follow up and let you guys know. All right, our second lead story. Okay, I have a huge breaking story about um, Megan Thee Stallion, but I want to get these two Diddy stories out the way quickly, all right? Um, Diddy's net worth reportedly declines by $600 million amid legal woes. This is crazy. Uh, Diddy's seeing his fortune sink faster and faster with reports claiming he is down $600 million dollars. Just a few years ago, he topped Forbes list as one of the highest paid celebrities, bringing in $130 million in a single year from ventures like Bad Boy Family Reunion Tour, Ciroc, and Sean John Clothing Line. Now with numerous lawsuits and federal indictments accusing the mogul of racketeering and all the stuff that he's accused of, we already know his charges, Diddy has seen major business severs tied, including partnerships with Capital Harlem, Hulu, and Revolt TV, which has presumably significant effects on his net worth. However, Forbes notes that Diddy's net worth has been steadily declining for years, even before these allegations. Diddy remains in custody at Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center as he pleads not guilty for his crime. So, not totally shocking, but also really shocking. You do know that Diddy is obviously paying a lot for lawyers and fees and all of this stuff, but $600 million, like that is crazy. Obviously, that's not all liquid cash. All a bunch of that is the fact that his businesses were worth something. And like Kanye West, when he made that, uh, when he made those allegations, not those allegations, but when he made those comments about adidas and adidas cut his partnership he went from being worth four billion dollars to like 400 million in a day right so just goes to show that when you hear about these celebrities being worth a billion dollars or two billion dollars that's just their company's evaluation and it could be gone in two seconds so yeah diddy is still rich he's still a millionaire but a lot of those big companies and those um those those ventures are gone so i'm sure most of you don't feel sorry for him but diddy's net worth is a lot lower. All right, in our third lead story, judge in New York rules Diddy accuser must reveal her identity or have case dismissed. All right, I wanted to put this in here quickly because this is going to be huge going forward with all of his civil suits. A lot of these civil suits are filed under Jane Doe or John Doe, meaning, hey, I wanna sue Diddy for money, just remember, it's civil, means I'm suing him for money, but I don't want to say my name. One judge in New York is saying, I'm going to read it to you quickly, but he's saying, you want to plead your case? You want to go after him? You got to say your name. How many people are going to want to put their name in their case? Um, I'm, and my guess is not a lot. And how the court system works is once one uh, judge rules away, it now becomes precedent. So uh, anybody else filing... All his lawyers have to do is say, hey, this one judge in New York said this, this is precedent. All of them are going to have to come out. All right. So um, according to TMZ, a judge in New York ruled that a woman who is suing Diddy for alleged sexual assault she claims happened 20 years ago must reveal her identity or have her suit dismissed. The woman is suing as Jane Doe and her lawsuit is one of 120 suits from Texas attorney Tony Busby saying he's filing against Diddy. In a ruling, the judge said that although the allegations are sensitive in nature, Jane Doe has not shown she is entitled to remain anonymous. She points out that the woman is an adult who decided to file a lawsuit in which she is accusing a famous person of engaging in hideous conduct appro approximately 20 years ago. The judge says the woman must file a complaint in her name by November the 13th or the case will be thrown out of court. Now, listen how important this is. This accuser was the first Busby client to file a suit against Diddy, claiming that he R-worded her under threat of violence in 2004 when she was a college freshman. The reason why I wanted to highlight that last part is this is the first case that Tony Busby presented to the courts. If he is presenting this first out of the 120, how strong are the rest of the 120? If he's putting, normally you go to war, you go to battle, you present your your strongest case first. Who knows what's going to happen, but 
a lot of these cases I think will end up being thrown out. Again, just to reiterate, this is civil, not criminal. But the reason why it's important is that the feds have said that a lot of the criminal cases, sorry, a lot of the civil cases they're going to use in criminal. So there are two different court systems, but they might blend. If you take 120, you take that down to maybe 20 or 30, and most of them get thrown out. Who knows what's going to happen, right? So, of course, as you guys know already, we'll stay up to date on this. But uh, all right, let's go over to this uh, Megan Thee Stallion story that I'm dying to talk about. All right, and our fourth lead story, Megan Thee Stallion admits that she didn't tell the truth when Gail King asked if she ever hooked up with Tory Lanez. She said, yes, B word, I lied. Yo, I cannot believe Megan Thee Stallion is literally like volunteering this information. Like, I don't understand what she's thinking about. Let's go right to the video and then I'll talk about it on the other side. I can't believe this. Yes, I lied to Gail King. First of all, I know that people even ask me about that. She's always want to talk about the shooting. Why did you ask me about fucking Tori? In the rapper's new documentary, Megan Thee Stallion, in her own words, she talks about why she lied to Gail King when the journalist asked her if she's ever been intimate with Tori Lanes. <laughs> did you have a sexual relationship with Tori Lanes? Yes, that's my question. Um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tori. Yo, Megan, and I love Megan Thee Stallion. But this is the stupidest thing that she could have ever have done. Period. Let me tell you guys something, okay? If you're somebody who has a vast experience in the court systems, all right? Criminally, um, civilly, I have six different lawyers. I have sued Nike. I have been arrested. Like I know about the court system, all right? As soon as you admit to lying about something, you, you ruin all credibility. If a jury gets a hold of this and hears, yo, I lied at some point, you completely are, are, um, what's the word? There's a word in the court system. I can't remember right now, but it did, sorry, it discredits you as a witness. It, your word gets discredited because all a lawyer is going to say is, Hey, wait a second. She lied about this. What else could she be lying about? And y'all know that Megan's testimony was very damning to, um uh Tory's case the fact that she got on court got up in court and said he was the one who did this he was the one who had that weapon in his hand he was the one who aimed it at me he was the one who did this without Megan's testimony Tory Lanes is does not get found guilty and he does not get sentenced to jail for 10 years uh Tory Lanes is filing for appeal we've talked about this i think every day this week Tory Lanes is in court right now the appellate uh, court has just accepted to hear his case. A lot of people think that he's uh, already been awarded um, uh, innocence. That's not true. We debunked that, I think, two or three days ago. That's not true. The court system said, we'll hear you. It's going to happen in early January. Sorry, uh, first quarter, uh, early 2025. If I was the defense attorney, I would bring... All the other evidence that they have, because they're saying that the weapon that because uh, it came back inconclusive during the case, there's that there's a bunch of other things. The driver, I'm not going to get into it. The driver that was the only sober one in the car at that time never testified. Why didn't he testify? There's a lot of holes in the case. There's a lot of people who are on Tory Lane's side. I'm sure you guys are going to comment below free Tory. Uh, we're going to get it a lot. I know. Um but now that Megan is like, yeah, I, I lied. I lied on Tori's name. This was a bad move. I don't understand why she did it. And what is crazier to me is that it's her own documentary. The documentary is on Amazon. I haven't watched it yet. This literally just came out a couple hours ago. This is her own documentary. Megan is selling in her own words why she would put this out. And I don't know the reason. She just said apparently it's she's in it. She's on the documentary explaining why she lied. And I'm sure it's going to be, well, I lied because it wasn't your business. I lied because this. I lied because I didn't have. Dude, this was. This, the, 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 the support that Megan had, I feel like she's going to lose because of this. I'm sure there's still going to be some people that support her. But like I said, there's Team Tory and there's Team Megan. You're going to see a lot of the people from Team Megan go over to Team Tory. Remember when 50 Cent. 
um, when this was first happening, 50 Cent was like, yo, she was, she's lying about being intimate with Tori. And because of that, I don't believe her. He later came back and apologized when the, the, the tape came out and what Tori was found guilty, etc. But a lot of people are going to use this against her. And I can't for the life of me figure out why she would do this on her own documentary. It's not like somebody discovered this. It's not like somebody was, you know, doing work and found this out and got a clip of her. No, this is her own documentary. And this is her coming out being like, yeah, I lied crazy let me know what you guys think in the comment section below maybe you guys think i'm wrong maybe this means nothing maybe this means that because she lied about that it doesn't mean that she's lying about the um the incident or that night but let me tell you something about the courts if you can discredit somebody by proving they're lying it discredits the rest of their testimony and i think that <laughs> his uh lawyers are good tory lanes uh lawyers are going to use this in his appeal and he might get off. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Send me an email, trendoutloud at cfqr600.com. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Kim Kardashian reportedly deletes her son Saint West YouTube channel after anti Kamala Harris post. Um, Kim Kardashian has reportedly shut down her son's YouTube page. The channel was taken down on Wednesday, October the 30th displaying a message that read this page is no longer available sorry about that saint who was eight years old had seemingly shared inappropriate videos that included a cartoon showing kamala harris as something unpleasant that somebody stepped in and clicked up um, from save the bell don't know what that means uh kim previously stated that she had control over the channel and could make it private or delete it if she needed to in september she shared a contract saint signed requiring him to show her all the videos before posting and stated if i don't listen to all the rules mommy could take my page down or make it private so love that she's being a good parent love that she is um that, i like that little contract it's like you have to sign this to mommy or we'll take it down and he got in trouble and she's doing her mommy thing. Um, one of the things that is ironic about this is while she's taking down this anti Kamala um, video, she simultaneously the same day wished um, Ivanka Trump a happy birthday. She posted this on her Instagram. She said, no one's sweeter than you, Ivanka Trump, happy birthday. So I don't know what to make of this. Uh, it looks to me maybe like she's just playing fair, like, hey, I don't want any anti Kamala Harris videos coming from my end. And hey, I'm friends with Ivanka, so happy birthday. It's a very um, volatile um, uh, climate right now, political climate right now. So who knows what she's doing, but I'm sure you guys will have an opinion about this. Sound off below. You, what do you think? Kim Kardashian is doing this. You think it's okay that she, how does that make you feel that she's wishing, that she's wishing, um, Kamala Harris's, sorry, Donald Trump's daughter a happy birthday while, um, protecting and taking down videos that make false ac accusations about Kamala Harris? What do you think about that? Comment below. Let me know. All right. Sticking on Kamala Harris, our second quick story, Montel Williams responds to report of an alleged tape with Kamala Harris. All right, um, Montel Williams shuts down reports of an alleged intimate tape with his ex VP Kamala Harris. Montel Williams tweeted this. She says, wow, I hear a blogger I've never heard of got millions of views claiming somebody is shopping around an intimate tape of me that will break the internet. Let's break the internet with the truth. There is no tape. Kamala Harris surely clearly has some people worried. So, um, hey, uh, let me see if there's anything else. While I was just informed by a friend who is a CEO at a large tech company, there was an alleged intimate tape being shopped around involving Kamala Harris and Montel Williams. This could break the internet and seriously damage the Harris, Harris campaign with just six days left until the election. All right, so I know a lot of um, Donald Trump supporters are probably going to be happy to hear this and believe it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. For anybody who's new, this is not a political podcast. Of course, I have to talk about political things that go viral. We are a purple podcast here. We have Donald Trump supporters. We have Kamala Harris supporters. So whenever we have stories like this, we just let the uh, people sound off in the comment section below or send me emails. Do you believe this? Do you think that there is an intimate tape of Kamala Harris and Montel Williams um, going on out there? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Montel Williams was a famous talk show host 20, 30 years ago. 
Uh, both Kamala and him have never denied their that they were in a relationship. They dated. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that there can be an October surprise? Or, I mean, this close will be like a November surprise of uh, Kamala Harris having an intimate tape going on out there. Do you think this would even hurt her in this day and age in 2024? She had the tape come out. Do you think that would have people um, not want to support her? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. All right, in our third quick story. All right, it's a quick story about Donald Trump. Another political thing, but I trust me, it's going to be quick, all right? Um, Donald Trump had a rally yesterday, and he said this, Women, I will be your protector whether you like it or not. This has gone viral. Everybody's talking about this. As you guys know, the whole Roe versus Wade and, you know, women not having a right to choose. And a lot of women are upset about this. So we want to throw this in here. Women and men, um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this. Um, especially I want to hear from the women out there. How does this make you feel? Does this rub you the wrong way? Does this sound creepy? Or you're like, yeah, I, I want a pre president that protects me. I'll run a little clip um, and then we'll... Go on to the next story. Take a listen. Former President Trump calling himself a protector of women. I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. All right, we're done with politics, I promise. Um, in our fifth quick story, hotel prices out of control, spiking 10 times higher on Taylor Swift Canada show nights. Rooms that cost $240 a night are now charging over $2,000 a night. All right, I'm not a big Swifty fan, but I do know how crazy people go about her. I will admit, I didn't think it was this crazy. Ten times the amount? This is nuts. So, of course, you guys know I'm Canadian, um, and I don't nearly, I don't always get to talk about Canadian news, so I'm happy to talk about this. Taylor Swift is coming to Canada, and reportedly in Toronto and Vancouver, prices and things are going crazy. The situation facing out-of-town Swift fans now have gotten even worse, with some hotels and short-term rentals in Toronto and Vancouver are raising their costs 10 times more over the weekend that she's performing. Some fans are cutting potential losses and selling their tickets, while others are coming up with creative solutions, including bartering spare tickets for accommodations. Wow, I just Taylor Swift at Mania. Canada, get ready. From what I've heard that happens like in London and all these other places, like apparently it's going to be mayhem um, in Toronto and Vancouver. So my Canadians, get prepared. All right, in our sixth quick story, Drake and OVO team rent out Scarborough Town Center to record a video for No Face. All right, y'all know I'm the biggest Drake fan in the entire world. Love Drizzy. I'm not a fan of this song. <laughs> Not a fan of the song, not a fan of this news headline. Every blog was reporting it. Yo, Drake rented out Scarborough Town Center. Yo, big deal, man. He's Drake. He could get anything he wants in Toronto. Drake could rent out Toronto if he wanted to. Like, big deal. He rented out Scarborough Town Center to drive some cars around in Scarborough Town Center. Like, what? I, I just, I don't see this. He's already done a video where he was in um, Yorkdale Mall, I think. So we've seen this already, A. B, the song is, it's not what we need from Drizzy. Somebody please send this to him, all right? I know a couple of uh, people at OVO that watch this podcast. Please get this message to Drake. Make sure you tell him that, turn out loud. We need some bops. We need some hits, bro. We need the Drizzy that's going to give us number one instant billboard hits. Like, I am longing for some good Drake music. Like, I don't get it. Um, Super Soak was dope on the 100 gig release. I like the videos that he put out. I wasn't even mad when he put out the 100 gigs. Like, ah, oh, those are just Lucy's, you know, B, B tape, uh, B side, you know, album filler tracks. All right, get that out. You wanted to check the temperature, see what's going on, have people hate online. Okay, I get it, but I don't think we needed a video for No Face. We need Drizzy, we need. Uh, I don't know if we need a full album, but if you're going to be releasing singles and shooting videos, I need a Drake bop. I need a hit. Drake, I'm not I'm not leaving the Drake camp. I'm still Team Drizzy all day, man. Drake could never do it wrong. He has given us so much music over the past 15 years. I'll need 15 years of bad Drake music to leave the Drake camp. I'm still rolling. That's still my guy. But please, please give us a hit song. All right, this brings us to question of the day. 
What are you getting serious about before year ends? All right, I wanted to throw this question in here. I thought it was a great question because I hate New Year's resolutions. Why just because it's January do you have to come up with a resolution? So I'm challenging you guys to think, what are you going to do before you close out the year? And to me, that's better. Like, hey, you know what? This year, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this. I don't think you should ever give up. You still have two months, 60 days. So what are you trying to tie up or try to get serious about before the year ends? Uh, Baby Joe 75 says, getting right with God, knowing my purpose, being a better mother to my son, losing weight and financial freedom. I love that answer. Let's go, Baby Jojo. Um, Dam Jaya 82 said, saving this bread. All right, that's good. Um, we need a little more though. We need some more context, please. Uh, beautiful XO said, not letting people play with me and realizing my worth. I love that. She also said, um, gave two comments, my health for real, physical, mental, and spiritual. Love that. I was just on a panel just yesterday talking about mental health. So big about that. Love that. Bianca Rita said, um, working on myself, not letting folks think they could play with me. Love that. Uh, Trisha Nicole said, deleting people. Woo. I love that. Work on deleting people. I did that this year. Every chance I get for whatever the reason is, I'm just deleting people out of my life. I was one of the people that kind of just, ah, it's okay. Let this slide. Uh, now I hear a whisper or something out, deleting out my phone, unfollowing them on Instagram, unfriending them. Trust me, it makes your life so much more cleaner and more pure. Uh, next person said mental health. Another person again said happiness, health, and wealth diagnosed um okay don't read that somebody said working on my music career congratulations uh, drop a comment below about your music career drop your i don't know your youtube link or your um soundcloud or whatever we'll try to promote your music somebody said cutting out people that have bad and negative energy thousand percent i've been doing that all year and will continue somebody said i'm gonna stop drinking and get so i'm gonna stop drinking and get so darn angry okay i thought it was gonna be positive but yes I've cut down a lot of my drinking too. So um, I'm going to continue that throughout the rest of the year. New Year's Eve might be a little bit hard, but hey, it'll, it's New Year's, right? Um, what else? Health, uh, working on a third source of income. Woo, love that. Um, in my book, my first book, I talked about having multiple sources of income, working through that. And then, you know, when one prevails, then you could maybe focus on that if it takes precedent over the other ones. But multiple sources of income are great. Somebody said working on my faith in Christ furthering my education, focusing on what's in front of me and letting go of what's holding me back. Woo, I love all your comments these uh, today. Somebody said I'm working on me, financing, and there you go. Love this. Working on my body. Love that. God, great answers. Still want to hear more from you guys. Send me your emails, trentoutloud at cfqr600.com. Comment below this video. What are you getting serious about? We got 60 more days. Don't feel like you need a whole year to accomplish something. Doesn't mean you can't get into the gym. Doesn't mean you can't start a new source of income. Doesn't mean that you can't get rid of bad people out your life. We've got 60 more days to make this year count. Get on it, people. Comment below and let me know what you're getting serious about. All right, this brings us to sports news. Bronny James scored his first NBA points in the Cleveland, Ohio, playing the Cavs. Amazing full circle moment. For those of you who don't know, LeBron James got drafted to Cleveland Cavaliers, where he's from. Bronny was born in Cleveland, I think. If, even if he wasn't born there, he was brought up, raised in this, um, in this, um, in this arena where Cavaliers played because LeBron played there for years. So it's really nice to see that, you know, Bronny was there as a little baby. And now that he's in the NBA, his first points ever scored were in Cleveland. And I do not want to talk about Bronny and LeBron anymore. I've said it where I'm like, let's just get over it. But I had to throw this in here because that is an amazing moment. Full circle moment. You're on this court as a baby and your first points, your first buckets scored we're in that same stadium. So shout out to Bronny. And ironically, if you look back at LeBron's first shot and, uh, and Bronny's first shot, they're almost similar. They're on opposite sides of the court, but it's kind of like a fadeaway jump shot. Um, I think it was maybe 15, 20 feet. So anyway, shout out to Bronny. Shout out to LeBron James. But could we please stop talking about this because 
we keep talking about it so much. Put him in the G League, let him get better, and make him have his own career, all right? Um, all right, guys, that is my Friday show. Thank you so much for kicking with me all week, not just today, but all week. Views are up on YouTube. Love you all for that. Subscribers, thank you so much. And, of course, obviously, too, on CFQR and everybody else who's on podcast channels. The weekend is coming up, so feel free to just go back and watch um, the episodes that you miss in the week, all right? Um, and to do that, I'm going to remind you of all the ways to watch your old episodes or keep up with episodes that you missed. If you are used to watching this show on YouTube or listening to it on podcast platforms, please try to check me out Monday through Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com. You can watch from anywhere in the world, any device. Um, so you can listen from anywhere in the world on any device or on 600 AM if you're in the Montreal area. Uh, we do play the Trend Out Loud podcast from 11 to 12, but we mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. It's a great hour. It's a great way to just kind of just break up your day, get your entertainment and viral news while listening to your favorite hits from the 90s and 2000s. And I select the music so you know it's going to be dope. All right. I am your DJ and a podcaster. Holla at your boy. Uh, vice versa. If you're used to listening to this podcast on CFQR 600 and you can't always catch the show from 11 to 12 because you're busy, you got things to do. I get it. Don't worry, we have three ways for you to stay up to date with the show. One, on CFQR 600's website, after you click Listen Live, there is a link that says Listen Again. You click that link, you'll see the Turn Out Loud podcast. Click that, all the podcasts will pop up from 1 to 366, which is today's um, episode number, 366. So you can catch us there. Of course, you can catch us on YouTube. And of course, on any podcast platform, just go to any, desi- just go to your desired site. Type in Trend Out Loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new show and we upload daily. If you're like me and you like to watch your podcast, yes, like I said, there is YouTube, but Spotify now actually supports video, so you can catch your video on Spotify. Follow me on any social platform. It's always the same handle at Trend Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, Exo City Media, on Instagram. And lastly... For those of you who are listening on CFQR, do not touch that dial. Don Smooth is coming up next with the midday mix from 12 to 1. And Don is always dropping the hits. I've known Don for years. Always dropping the hits. So make sure you always tune in or stay tuned in after my show to listen to Don Smooth and everybody else on CFQR, right? We were building up a nice team here at the station. Guys, have a great, great weekend. Be safe. Have fun. I will see you all on Monday, man. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace!